Hey, this is Ari Shapiro, and you're listening to PS Tape Recorder on the internet. Hello there, I'm PF, this is my tape recorder. Coming up, Andy Kindler. I, the thing about it is, is that if I really put time into uh, social networking that I should, I would be uh, out of the business very quickly. Andy Kindler, always welcome on the show. Another great chat with Andy, of course. How could it not be? We have a song of the week coming up from April Towers off of Nottingham. We played them before, uh, about a year or so ago. They're finishing up their new album. We're trying to get their new album started, actually, their debut album. We'll uh, discuss that more in the outro. Uh, but first, we have a, well, not really a dumb bit. We have a concert review. We went and saw the Retro Futura Tour up there in Dayton, and that featured uh, Katrina and the Waves, Paul Young. Well, let's get to the review, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, first of all, for those who don't know, the Retro Futura Tour is, uh, I guess, our, our handful of friends in Europe will recognize them as uh, what they call the Rewind Festival. It's not the same folks organizing, but it's uh, 80s bands, mostly. And in North America, what we would consider more the new wave alternative bands. And in Europe, they're just pop bands, oddly. But um, uh, So for we saw them in Cleveland a couple of years ago. It was one of the first Retro Futura shows that they did. And Retro Futura uh, is, happens once a year. It's various bands. Sometimes the, the, the similar suspects show up. Sometimes it's, they bring in different bands. But uh, we saw them in Cleveland. It was great. But the, the problem was, well, it was Katrina and the Waves, uh, Midjour, who smashed it. Uh, China Crisis, who were great, uh, Howard Jones and Tom Bailey of Thompson Twins, but uh, we kind of ran into a hiccup on that show because the bus had broken down bringing the tour from uh, New York State to Cleveland, so they were late getting in. Uh, a lot of the acts had to cut songs from their set because I guess there was a curfew at the venue and they had to be done by 11 o'clock. And uh, it, it was kind of a, it was, but it was still great. Kind of under circumstances, everybody just, just killed it. It was great. But this was even better because everybody was well rested. It's a great outdoor venue in, in suburban Dayton in the suburb of Kettering. This is wonderful. Uh, Katrina on board again for this one came out. Uh, did a, she did uh, four or five songs, including, you know, the big hit, Walking on Sunshine, and Going Down to Liverpool, hit for the Bangles. She was very good. And this time didn't, didn't uh, yammer on like she did in Cleveland and cut in other people's set. She succinctly told the story of Katrina and the Waves, song by song, with the, the five songs she did. Turned it over to Paul Young, who shared her backing band. Uh, and then they quickly turned things around. By Paul Young, great. Uh, interesting song selection. A lot of people on social media made requests. They wanted to hear Wherever I Lay My Hat, That's How I Call Home. And I, Oh, and uh, he didn't do Oh Girl, his big cover from... Uh, uh, back in, I think it was the early 90s, late 80s. But, uh, but he did a bunch of hits. Uh, did Every Time You Go Away, second to last, which was interesting. And uh, boy, that's a tune I can't decide whose version I like better. Uh, the Hall & Oates original, brilliant. But then Paul Young adds that, that gorgeous hook that uh, you take a piece of me with you. He added that as a hook in the chorus, and it's just brilliant. Um, sounded great. Come Back and Stay was his wrap-up song. What's strange about that was there's that really cool bass part in it, and while they let this backing band breathe a bit and you know do solos and things like that, they didn't bring that up in the mix. And that that bum 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 bass line in that song is just that's the whole song, and uh, they didn't really let the guy shine in that, unfortunately. Modern English featuring four of the five original members came out, uh, it rolled out with Ink and Paper, which is their best song. Uh, they, they they smashed it. Uh, did a uh, one from After the Snow, I think. I think they did Hands Across the Sea. Wrapped it up, of course, with you know, the big hit. And what's interesting about these bands is you think, you know, they have the one top 40 hit, but then if you listen to radio in the 80s, you're like, oh, yeah, that was them, too. And you probably recognize a lot more songs than you realize, even though on the poster it says, you know, Katrina and the Walking on Sunshine, Paul Young, every time you go away. But then you you know more songs. Even wandering around the grocery store today, hearing these on Muzak, they put them on the 80s station, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this song. So Modern English were great. Uh, they, they were awesome. Joined by Dave Wakeling to uh, do Melt With You. And, uh, of course, that kind of brought the house down. And uh, uh, kind of a hard act for English Beat to follow, but they did. And weird thing about English Beat is English Beat, as you know, uh, Dave Wakeling tours here as English Beat featuring Dave Wakeling, ranking Rogers over in the UK as uh, English Beat featuring ranking Roger. They played together once in New York a couple of years ago. But um, Wakeling brought some of the American English Beat but he also used part of the backing band that Katrina and Paul Young had used. So it was kind of strange, but it uh, worked out really well. His saxophone player was great. Uh, his, his, I guess, rapper, you would say, kind of guy taking the ranking Roger old. That guy was great. And uh, Song of the Night was probably Save It For Later, which you heard uh, coming into this bit. Uh, wow, it was incredible. Did uh, like the 12-inch version of that. 
And uh, English Beat really, I think, had the best set of the night overall. Boy, it's tough to tell, though, because everybody was so good. Uh, so that created kind of a mountain for Men Without Hats to climb. And I'm thinking, like, now, why is Men Without Hats batting second to last before Hojo? It seemed very strange. And as they were setting up the set, I realized, oh, it's a logistics thing, because Men Without Hats are very keyboardy. Howard Jones, obviously, keyboardy. So just to make it easier, I think, to switch the sets around, uh, Men Without Hats would bat before Howard Jones, and it's more logical to bring the you know the keyboard band out, and then you know the the big keyboard guy Howard Jones, and um, Fangirl was with us, and she's like, "What they gonna do? Safety dance five times? Ha ha ha! No, they have more hits than that, more songs than that. But since English Beat did so good and had everybody revved up, I, Ivan very cleverly rolls out with and oh, before I get to that, uh, the uh, the radio people were, were just rubbish introducing them. Oh my god, I wanted to shoot myself. It's an okay radio station up there that was sponsoring it, and and thank them for sponsoring and bringing the show to town. But ah, oh, the, the the witty banter they tried. Are you ready to really do it? Practicing the safety dance. Gosh, shut up. So anyway, Men Without Hats uh, roll out with the seven inch version of safety dance. That's without the little two note riff and without the girl, you know, um, spelling out s s s s a a. Without that, do safety dance a short version. Uh, gets everybody going. Do the follow-up single to that from that album, which is a great song called The Message. Brilliant. Uh, then he rolls out with his other top 40 hit here in America, Pop Goes the World, which was brilliant. And then uh, an ABBA cover. And then uh, did a song from, I think it was their second or third album, which was a minor hit in Canada called Where Do the Boys Go? He was written with one of the uh, former members of the band who passed away in the 90s due to complications from AIDS. So he dedicated uh, the song to his his old friend. And uh, that, that went really well. And they sounded amazing, especially the uh, the synth bass and safety dance was really pumping through. So I think they actually had the best sound overall tonight we would, we would go to Men Without Hats. And, of course, to wrap it up, why well, you get the 12-inch of safety dance. So uh, very well played by Mr. Dorachuk. I Hats off. And, of course, Hojo came out and, and just blew the lid off the place. 62 years old, can still hit every note. This guy is just so happy to be there, not like in a desperate way. He just is happy to be there. When we saw him, uh, Retro Future in Cleveland, he was the second to last act. And he was the one that talked Tom Bailey into coming out on the road and doing those shows. And uh, but very happy to come out and be the, you know, uh, open up for Tom. And I saw him last year. He was the opener opener for uh, OMD and Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies were headline, OMD were in the middle. And Hojo came out, set the table. Again, happy to do it. And uh, it got the whole crowd involved. It was in, in great humor. His band was really having a good time. And, uh, yeah, just a- incredible. Sounded great. Uh, I think of all the people, well, my wife said Ivan sounded good, but Ivan's got that baritone. So that's not as hard to maintain, I don't think. And he takes care of himself, too. He's always been kind of a health nut and, you know, into the meditation and things. So, you know, Ivan not abusing his body. But I think Hojo, to hit some of those high notes, you've really got to take care of yourself. And uh, he really has. So if you have a chance to catch this as a week left of shows, uh, you can uh, just look up Retro Future Tour, check it out. Uh, if they come around next summer, you go and check it out because every time they bring these around, it just gets better and better. I think the bands learn from each other and you know learn how to do this right. And uh, we're going to go out on uh, my favorite Howard Jones song. Uh, and he, he did a great job doing this one as well there in Dayton. And then we'll move on to our interview with Andy Kindler. Andy Kindler is a stand-up comedian originally from New York City, imagine that. And he's known for his, uh, I guess you'd say, acerbic wit, criticism of the comedy scene sometimes, and uh, uh, political uh, opinions, and his opinions on faith. He's pro-faith, by the way. And let's uh, hear more now from Andy Kindler. Uh, 
Hello. Hi, Andy. It's PF from Minneapolis City Pages and PF Tape Recorder Podcast. How are you, man? Hey, man. What's up? Everything's good. Cool. Sounds like it. I'm uh, uh, I'm sleepy as always. I think one time on your podcast we fell asleep because I was overworked. Remember that? Uh, I called, yes, and your wife was confused, and she she thought this must have been a mistake because you never miss calls, and then you got to the phone, and you're like, yeah, I slept through, I slept through the call. <laughs> Yeah, but now I'm back. All right. That's the old Andy Kindler. Right. <laughs> back and f- wide awake. Wide awake in America. I'm wide awake. I haven't fallen as- I remember that because uh, I I hadn't I wasn't sleeping for a long time. Well, I wasn't sleeping that good because I can't, uh, you know, I'm twi- tweeting. I got to get, you, you know, you can't. You and the president. You can't. It's, it's a battle. Okay. You and the president. Yeah. <laughs> Did I never, you know, I didn't think I'd like that guy, but I love his tweeting. I know. I mean, you have to. I mean, don't kid yourself. You got to give it to him. He, uh, I like a guy who, uh, you know what? I, I just hope he's gone soon. Oh my I, god! I really feel, I really feel like uh, this is not funny anymore. Oh my! Right? <laughs> it's just crazy. I was gonna. Uh, I'm, and it, 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 listeners may hear this in the dumb bit, which actually comes ahead of this interview. But um, this is a funny thing. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago on the podcast. You had that big Made in America rally. And uh, he says, I talked to the president of Omaha Beef. Omaha Beef, by the way, is the football team in Omaha. It's not the na- it's not the food company, Omaha Steaks. I talked to the president of <laughs> Omaha Steaks, and he's congratulated me on the beef deal. And then he said, and then uh, Sonny Perdue, and then he stops talking. And it's like, well, the reason he stops talking is because the beef deal it was gotten because China's going to sell chicken here now. <laughs> That's one. And two, for my day job, we interview companies, and I was trying to interview Omaha Steaks, and I found a press release on their site, CEO of Omaha Steaks. I never talked to the president. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, and he just lies, he, uh, lies blatantly. He lies. He lies uh, with uh, impunity. I, right. I've never even. I'm so upset about it. I don't even know what the word means. But I know. It means <laughs> with a uh, uh, with you. You don't care how much punity is involved. Exactly. Something like that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And Pardo was talking about this a couple of weeks ago that he was at some stadium and he goes, "We set a record for attendance in this stadium, and you can see empty seats in the stands." <laughs> Yeah, well, that should have been the first warning. Oh my God! On that first day, that that's, first day when the that's what Spicer went crazy. Right, right. That's what Durst said uh, last week on the show. He did the exact same thing. We should have known when he said he's the best attended inaugural, and the photographic evidence proved him wrong. Although he said it was a lie, they they must have photoshopped those people out. Why? Uh, but you know, nobody. I knew he was evil, Trump. But I couldn't even see that coming. I didn't oh, think right. Of it. Yeah, that was very confusing to me. Yeah, it, it, it's almost as if you don't have time to conduct your regular Twitter battles. <laughs> no, I've tried to. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to grow, uh, grow up a little bit on Twitter, but it's not happening. <laughs> uh, I've really, yeah. Well, I've tried to dial it back on Facebook because uh, even a long time ago, my nephew unfollowed me, even though he's more liberal than me now. He's, <laughs> he's crazy tree hugging, uh, out saving the forest, forest ranger uh, liberal. Kind of funny. Well, Facebook is Facebook is the hardest to handle because on Facebook, everybody, you know, you make a comment, and then everybody's comment is right there underneath your comment. Right. So it's, it's much easier to get into a fight. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know what? What's your name? Morgan Morgan Murphy. You know Morgan Murphy? Yes. Yes. I like her line. She goes, uh, "Before Twitter, I didn't know that my jokes had answers." <laughs> That's a great line. Oh my god. That's a great line. Yeah. Yeah, and well, a lot of comedians say, "Well, if a comedian makes a joke, you shouldn't comment after it or try to tag it or make it better." So I've kind of tried to, you know, but when comedian friends I know are being serious, and we won't name names, but you know who you are, Tim Slagle. Uh, I, I'll comment because he knows I'm going to comment. So I think he's, he's just doing it to, to get my goat. Well, uh, Tim Slagle is like a uh, he's a more of a conservative guy, right? Yeah, more libertarian even actually. Uh, then but he doesn't like. He doesn't like. Uh, I draw the line at Trump. Well, I don't think so. I think he still he still s- tweets things that kind of not in full support of him. But if people are he thinks being unfair because uh, he hated Hillary, obviously, um, you know he'll he'll still stand up and say, oh well, you know, it's and try to. I don't know. It's it's crazy. The worst one was uh, the worst example. Well, actually, I talked to Tim Sclay a little bit because he was doing a. Sh- uh, I think he was doing these shows. Ask me once where you know people would be working on a whole right. new yeah, app yeah. or something like right. that. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, once a year he does that. Yeah, a lot of fun for people, I hear. Yeah, so uh, um, I remember that, but uh, I don't know. 
I, I, I forgot what I was going to say. I've been having this problem where I, I, I start into a sentence. I don't know what I'm saying. There, it's I, very, very odd. I'm with you. It's, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Aha! Drew Hastings. He's the one who drives oh, me nuts. Yeah, he's from here. And, uh, Are you kidding me? No, he's from Cincinnati, and he's the mayor of a small town east of here called Hillsboro. And uh, every time I talk to him, he's nuttier and nuttier. First time I talked to him, it was fine. Second time, he got all up on my grill about, like, I write for, you know, a, a left-wing rag, City Beat, here in Cincinnati. And he thought I was going to do some kind of some kind of hit piece on him. And I'm like, no, you're just a comedian that's from here, and you're fun to talk to. And then, then he was fine. And then he, now he's, just, right. he's gone completely nuts. Uh, yeah, and I, I got an argument with him on uh, on uh, Facebook, but he didn't respond to my. This is one of these things where he said, "Oh, are you saying that I, you know, I'm conservative? Are you saying that I too am?" I said, "Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am saying you too." As a matter of fact, but um, now the thing about Drew was he's a very charming man, so I don't know how he got involved with the Repub Republicans. Yeah, well, he was he you goes know? way back. He like, before he was a comedian, he started his own businesses and stuff like that. So. You know, you can kind of see, uh, and of course, being the mayor of a small town, you know, kind of that grassroots thing, uh, you know, it makes sense. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's some of the stuff he's posted lately. I'm like, hmm. Oh yeah, I, 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 I've, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll stay away from Facebook for a long time. Yeah. I, the thing about it is, is that if I really put time into uh, social networking, that I should. I would be uh, out of the business very quickly. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm in the business. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. <laughs> I'm in the business. I would never claim to be in the business. But uh, I'm trying now. That I, I got this thing uh, where it shows you how much time you spend on social networking. Oh, man. Like a, And uh, I guess I didn't need to prove it to myself. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, but uh, so I'm, I'm, I need to take some kind of a boot camp, a uh, get off of social media boot camp. Yeah, it's like the only things I post nowadays. Like this morning, I posted uh, Tom Hamilton's great home run call, the Indians game last night. They beat Colorado in the bottom of the ninth. So I posted that. I posted another comedian, a local guy, was on the show a couple weeks ago. He's got the third most downloaded episode right now of the podcast. So I posted a screenshot of that. I'm, you know, trying to be positive. And very rarely now do I comment on people's stuff, political stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, uh, I never want to say I've learned my lesson, but <laughs> I actually have my own podcast now. It's called the. That's uh, right. People said, Andy, please. <laughs> Many people said, I have a letter from someone. So, Andy, please stop <laughs> uh, and start a pocket. So it's called Thought Spiral. It's my friend Josh and I. And I've never done anything like this before, and it is. Uh, it's staying firmly on the shelves. <laughs> no, there you go. Okay. But it's me reflective, and uh, that's what I say when I'm not uh, if I'm not uh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so, <laughs> there you go. But finally, finally, I'm in the pod. I'm where, and I know now the money will soon come uh, rolling in. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because. And Ira Glass, if I may name drop, was on the show a couple of years ago, and he said, podcasting always seems like, it's like soccer. It's always going to be the next big thing, and it never is. But I was, <laughs> isn't that a great Well, he's thing? the first, he's the granddad, not the granddaddy, but he's one of the main guys. He's, he is, and well, he said, the, the show has two million radio listeners, but a million podcast downloads. I'm like, Ira, that's a lot. And But what's weird yeah. is, when I was, uh, speaking of our friend Mike Cronin, he's that the the well, he's actually a regional guy. I actually lives in Chicago. Um, he's doing very well, actually. But um, uh, you know, and I got we have like almost five back up to five thousand listeners a week now for my show, and I'm just a guy in my family room getting five. So I mean, people with an actual interesting good podcast must have a lot more listeners than that. So I, maybe it is a bigger thing than people realize. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I think you're underselling the family room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people love the fact. When they listen to your show, they go, what is that family room like? Are yeah, there pictures of Groucho Marx on the wall? No. You know what I'm saying? It's Ikea furniture, a hardwood floor. You could be and, uh, Prairie Home. Yeah. The Prairie Home. The Suburban Home Companion. I, yeah. Yeah. Why did they make... They, 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 Prairie Home Companion is still continuing. It is. And uh, I didn't know it was still continuing because uh, my my whole fear was how, how, how am I going to tell if 
the uh, scan button still works on my radio. <laughs> but now they have this other guy. He's good. He's a very talented guy. They should uh, uh, why saddle him with that name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that whole form of people. You know, I used to listen to that show on my way home from work when I worked at the airports. So I'd get out about noon on Sunday, and they repeat the, the night before on the public radio station here. And I'd be like, and I try to dissect and figure out. I mean, there's an audience full of people genuinely laughing at this. And not to put the knock on Garrison Keillor. We love Garrison Keillor. I don't think people are trying to put the knock on him, but at the same time... Oh, I just, am. Oh, are, okay. <laughs> because he's always like, uh, I mean, uh, I know, where are we going to get our noir takeoffs now? <laughs> His guy noir. Guy noir. And, and I mean, lefty on the... I can't even imagine. Yeah. It's going to be... Where am I going to get my radio theater players? <laughs> yeah, and the guy making sound effects with his mouth. It's not Michael Winslow. Uh, is your sound effects guy on the, uh, yeah. on, the on, what was Garrison Keillor, on the, the sound old, effects guy? On the, on the old one, yeah. Yeah, he had a guy that did sound effects with his mouth, and everything sounded like this. That's basically every sound effect. Uh, Oh, you mean like an old radio play? Like, and then he opened the door and, and it was would, creaking, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arr, do, arr, yep. arr, <laughs> arr. I think you can get the game. I love the Dave, uh, Michael Feldman guy. You ever hear him? I oh, yeah, yeah. He's been, he's been on the show, I think. Uh, I, I've interviewed him. I don't know if it was pre-podcast or not. But yeah, he's he's. Uh, I've interviewed him before. He's he's okay. Well, I uh, yeah, absolutely. I, love, I think he's hilarious. Uh, he's like, it really reminds me of... There's nobody funnier. Like, the, like he he's actually funny in the moment all the time. I'm funny in the moment. Oh yeah, people don't quick. get it. And who's, who's the guy? Uh, the guy that was wait wait don't tell me. Peter Siegel. He's pretty quick. Uh yeah, I can't I can't listen to him because I, I got an uh, argument with him. Although I don't know if he knows it. I don't know if he knows it was an argument, but <laughs> he's one of those guys who uh, uh, he very got very suspicious of people who uh, at one point squeezed in after they went to Harvard. Oh. <laughs> And he goes, and I, and I went to Harvard, so. And then uh, there was a time period where I would argue with all people who were supportive of new atheists, which I'm still in the same way now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you, yeah, the Sam Harris is and all these things. This is a big sticking but point ma for you. Maybe their movement is peaked. Yeah. Well, I don't I, know what that means, peaked. <laughs> well, I think it's it's weird that, uh, you know, people always say that, you know, all liberals are atheists and hate God and everything like that, but there are a lot of liberals of faith. Uh, and it, yeah, it, yeah, and then people, but that's that doesn't fit. As we say, doesn't fit the uh, doesn't fit their 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 point of view. Their their well, yeah, their point. Of, well, the thing is because I think that this this is simple. They think like okay, I I uh, believe I believe in. I use the word God, but I don't know. You know, I don't, I use it to describe something, and you can't just describe. Right. And so they think everybody is spiritual. Is like uh, believes in the, in the sky wizard. You know, yeah, I, they always come up with a, a a new negative name to uh, to label something that you have never thought of yourself. Oh, right. I'm sorry, your uh, machine in the sky is working poorly. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I'm I'm letting go of all my anger now because uh, uh, it's, it's eating me up inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who needs it, right? Exactly. Um, I know another... Turn that crowd upside down. Look, this could be the last day of our lives. Really? Uh, I don't know who you, you know, you, I don't know who you root for with, and Kim Jong own against, uh, uh, mutually assured destruction. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody realizes, I had some people talk, I was at the, the, the gym today, uh, doing a little lunchtime workout, and I heard people saying, why don't we just go ahead and bomb them? And I'm like, well, because they're right next to one of our closest allies. And oh my God! Who who who's saying me? Well, are any of these people in the in the government? No, they're just people. Just people just got back from a workout and they're like, "Why well, are we bombing them already?" And it's, it's old white guys. Who else is it? They have no idea no. that South Korea is like a right next two to, feet away. Exactly. No, not even not even two feet. They're right next to each other, and the capital of Seoul is only thirty miles from the border. So, yeah. <sighs> And the wind blows south. You know, the only thing I, uh, I only, I learned everything about MASH watching, uh, 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 Vietnam War watching MASH. Oh, I yeah. blew that joke. Oh, so, but thank God it wasn't that bad. It wasn't yeah. a good joke. But yeah, that's all I, uh, that's all I know about Korea is from MASH. But you know, Same. uh, MASH was more about Vietnam, but yep. it used the Korean War as a pretext. Exactly. 
<laughs> you, you couldn't have a show like MASH on TV today. Yeah, you could. Of course you could. Uh, could you have, well, the one thing that they do not want a uh, laugh track. That was the one thing they did not want. Right. And you and you can see why they wouldn't want a laugh track. Oh, yeah, yeah. In a war, in a war well, movie. Exactly. You can, well, you can, uh, the, the DVDs, you can turn off the laugh track. You can. Oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah. I have, well, the first that's three, good. I have the first three seasons, and yeah, you can turn off the laugh track, and it, it does make a difference. A lot of people think that when I play in the clubs, it turns off the <laughs> laugh track. There you go. You know, See? a couple of times, I've had shows where I, I couldn't even get crickets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if, you, if you put the crickets to sleep, <laughs> that's when you have to reevaluate you've your act. You've accomplished something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want I, also, I want to ask you real quick about your buddy James Woods, but I. I oh, the real you mean the oh real James God, Woods? God, and insufferable! Finally, he took down that phony Thomas Jefferson quote he had in his profile for years. Like Thomas Jefferson never said that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh. He is. Here's the thing: if your comments under whatever you're saying, uh. Read like the most. I mean, uh, uh, like screaming racism. Maybe there, maybe there's something wrong with what, what you're saying. And he, he's like <laughs> a. He, he's not even pleasant. No, he's a he's a nut. <laughs> or funny. He's not even funny because he's ridiculous. Yeah, he's just insufferable. Right, right. But didn't he, uh, he get kicked? Uh, oh, the worst thing he did was he showed these uh, people who were uh, the kid was transgendered. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy is like, um, and he, uh, he's like insane. I mean, I don't want to yeah. get insane, because I don't, I don't want to get sued by James Woods. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you may remember. But he also is a chicken, he's a chicken hawk. Oh, yeah, big. Well, chicken you, hawks bother me. You, oh, yeah, I, I, I hate chicken, well, Fella, fella, and it's it's currently rattling the saber right now. Chicken hawk. Well, the one is. The one's not. The one actually. The one is. Here. Yeah. Um, well, the other one, the Kim Jong Un guy. Yeah. That guy. I've never seen anybody so uh, delighted. He finds explosions funny. Yeah. That's what makes me. He's always uh, uh, laughing it up with the other generals when when the explosion happens. <laughs> but that could be cultural. Maybe, Maybe. in That's... his country. That's considered. Maybe at the Pyongyang Comedy Festival, that kind of stuff is is. Uh... Oh, I, I'm playing the Pyongyang. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so the, the people who got stuck in these countries and it's uh, heartbreaking. I'm not going to any country. Uh, I'm I'm worried about visiting this country right now, the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> so let alone, let alone going to other areas, yes. hotbeds. Hotbeds. <laughs> um. Well, uh, I, this has been a great chat because there's actually nothing I can really use for the for the papers. That's always good. But what I do want to ask you, because I'm curious, and also for the paper, is um, the state of the industry. You gave, of course, your, your big state of the industry speech. And I'm curious, when you give the state of the industry, is it more stand-up focused, or is it comedy in general, or is it entertainment business state of the... Uh, it, it's changed over the years, because in the old days, when I first started the speech... It was, there were like three, still like three major networks and Fox and, and a lot of the people, um, who are, in, who I was making fun of, like executives, they could be there in the room. So there was, uh, there, there was more of a consciousness of that I was going to go out to certain t targets. Okay. But now it's like everything is so, uh, diffused that I never really know what's going to, like this last year was really fun. But I do kind of try and treat it now as a uh, a stand up set, but okay. like you know, I, I all the all of the jokes during the year that were show business oriented, I stick right in the in the thing. But I just because sometimes you just never know. The other thing is that people don't wa are watching. Uh, in, in the old days, everyone knew when the new sitcoms were coming out. Right, it's like, not quite the same anymore. You yeah. know, everything is people are on their own wavelengths. Exactly. Yeah, the one we really like, uh, Red Oaks. Uh, we don't know even when it's coming out again. They they and they put on their Facebook page, "Oh, new episodes coming soon." Could be August, could be September. We don't know. Whereas, like, yeah, the broadcast. What is that? Network. I I now you teach uh, my. I can't see uh, Paul, say, Paul my interest. Paul Reiser series. He's working on a new series now, so this will be the end of Red Oaks. But um, uh, Pardo got me into it. It's about. It takes place at a country club in the '80s. 
Uh, Paul Reiser plays the dad of this girl, and um, the two main kids. It's a British kid actually. Is the plays the main. He's the protagonist, and uh, he's in love with this rich girl. And uh, yeah, it's it's really good. Um, where uh, where is it? Uh, 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 Amazon. Amazon. Now you know that uh, 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 I like when you set me up for my joke. Yes. Uh, that I have a show on UPS Ground. <laughs> And you know what? Uh, you know how I sold it? It has a shipping element. Shipping element. Halfway through the show, you ship something. Well, I came up with an idea for a show about uh, uh, Paul Reiser, and he has uh, um, narcolepsy, maybe, or something like that. So, uh, so, so he can't sleep, but he's Slow Riser, it's called. Slow Riser. Okay. Now, he doesn't need that. He's got this thing going. I'm going to definitely watch watch this. I also watch uh, uh, Amazon. Is that also where Marie Bamford show is? No, that's Netflix. I'm trying to get my wife to watch that. Yeah, that's a great show. And uh, I can't keep up with every. I can't keep yeah. up with everything. Oh. My favorite channel is FedEx Saturday <laughs> Tuesday Delivery. Speaking of Netflix, uh, your boy Marin uh, on Glow, he smashed it. When did Marin become a good actor? Holy shit. Well, I always think he was a great actor. Oh. But, you know, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that show, but I, I want to see. Oh, you got to see the show. I do want to see just for him. See. Just for him, it's worth it because I think on his show, I think playing himself, it kind of like hamstrung him a little bit in a way because he, I think he was a little maybe a little self conscious or what. But I mean, he was fine. But you see him on Glow, and it's like, holy cow, he's amazing. Yeah, well, I think the uh, the playing a version of yourself is always a, is a hard thing to do. Yeah, I thought he did a great job on his show. Because my my favorite thing on his show is when he fantas uh, that episode where he fantasizes about if he hadn't if his life took a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and he's like a family member. And, yeah, he's like yeah. a dad. And I love I love doing that show, and I also really? enjoy uh, working whoever employs me. Right, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and and I should uh, remind you that uh, my daughter, known to the podcast fans as Fan Girl, big fan of uh, 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 of Mort and uh, uh, Bob's Burgers. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. She's a massive fan of that. I've watched a couple episodes with her. Uh, it's one of the shows we we're uh, into together. So, uh, yeah, yeah. She's um uh, always excited to hear you're going to be on the podcast. So. And I love that. Uh... I love you know, those, all those people. A lot of people on that show go all the way back to Dr. Katz. Oh, yeah, so that's right. Quite a, quite a pedigree. That's what I've got to get right. Oh, yeah, I love you on Dr. Katz. I, I, to this day, we were, we were, and I tell you this every time, we were just in Vegas over the summer. If you have a duffel bag, you'll get a duffel bag. <laughs> Ah, my old! I remember yes. those bits. Yes. If you you get you get you will get luggage yeah. on those shuttles. <laughs> you'll save two dollars. Yeah. Because uh, you know when you first go to Vegas, you don't realize that the uh, strip is like a uh, twelve feet away from the from the airport. Not really, right. but yeah, I'm but guilty of hyperbole. Yes, yes, <laughs> and uh, if guy- nothing, if nothing else. Yes, yes. The guy, you like my landline? Yeah, See, I know. A lot of these comics today, they don't go the extra mile. It's, I installed a land. It's not really a It's a, a quasi-landline. It's, it's not it's, like a landline in the old... Like, I don't know if the kids today realize that there's a thing like you could plug in the wall. But it's not, it's not like an HDMI cable. It's not a USB. It was a phone jack. It was. It was magical. Magical. The four prongs and the dial and the big, long... Uh, cord and yeah, and and the uh, and uh, the, the two line phones, right? Oh yeah, big. <laughs> I came from a time when uh, you could only have one phone in your house, or the phone company would get mad at you and, and try to charge you like thousands of dollars extra for it. Dude. I can't believe they did that. And uh, uh, well, how did they get away with it? Well, those days, I still like the sound of a rotary phone. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, to me. It reminds me, it's like it's like watching an, the Andy Griffith show. Oh, definitely, yeah. I okay. wanted to go back to the days where you could dial zero and have a nice conversation with somebody. Exactly. <laughs> right? I'm you know, when say. I was a kid, you could dial, uh, I, I don't know if it's still true, but you could dial nervous, and they would give you what time it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
and the temperature. Now this seems to be the kids today, they seem to be able to find uh, the weather easier. They do. <laughs> I don't know if this new character is an uh, out-of-touch guy, but... Out-of-touch guy, these kids... I don't see it sweeping the nation. I don't know. Well, you, you never... Maybe you, maybe you workshop it, maybe you... Uh, workshop it, that's maybe. right. Everything's a boot camp. It is. Now, I actually went to a boot camp, boot camp, <laughs> where you learn how to make boots. How to, uh, make boots. All right. What? <laughs> you know, the start of my jokes are always better than the ending, and it makes it exciting. No, I think those are, those are some great endings, and it's uh, and people can follow along. It's great. Yeah, and I know that I may have uh, not been charming on this uh, on this uh, right today, but I certainly know I I wasn't a de de deadening. You don't no. feel dead inside, do you? No, I don't. In fact, I predict this will this will be one of the top downloaded episodes. You because you're all you're, oh, your episodes I always do it. well. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank. Appreciate you taking the time, man. I know your your publicist said you were super busy, but appreciate you taking the time. Uh, as always, the print piece will be in city pages, in print and online. Uh, so the kids today can see it, and uh, the pod I, podcast will drop this Sunday. I always love talking to you. It's always fun. Oh, uh, it is, man. And uh, we'll get you here in Cincinnati. Every time you're in Cincinnati, we have something going on. Because last time you were here, I was about to hit you up for tickets, but I think we had to go up to Cleveland to visit relatives or something. So ne next time you're in Cincinnati, for sure, we will uh, meet up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, yeah it's, been, uh, it's been at least a year. So. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I hope it happens. Great, cool. man. All right. All right. Talk, talk hey, have, soon, a, have a great day, man. Be Thanks, cool. Man. Bye. Thanks again to Andy Kindler for being on the show. Andy is in Minneapolis at the famous Acme Comedy Company, Tuesday, August 22nd through Saturday, August 26th. For the rest of his dates, he hasn't updated his calendar on his website. It's andykindler.com, but you can go there and hopefully he'll get that sorted soon. And uh, you can find out anything else you need about Andy Kindler. Of course, uh, you know, Bob's Burgers, he has a voice on there. And he's, he's always got his, uh, he's always mixed up in something. He's always something always going on with Andy. All right, so we've arrived at the song of the week. Oh, and by the way, if you want to go back and listen to any previous episodes, if you're listening to this any other way uh, than via Podbean, uh, where they're all listed, although they're not listed very well. I've kind of fallen behind on the episode guide. Apologies. I'll get that caught up. But, uh, you know, just Google PF Tape Recorder, Tim Slagle, or PF Tape Recorder, you know, whoever, and it should come up. And you could probably scroll back. I think iTunes says the last 250 episodes, but this is episode 317, so I might have to reset that. But I'm afraid when I reset that, it's going to fill up your iTunes with the, all the episodes. Again, I don't know why it does that, but um, I will try to get that sorted uh, soon as well. But we have arrived at the Song of the Week. Song of the Week, this is a duo from Nottingham. Uh, it's also home to a woman named Indiana, who you might have heard of. She's gotten some uh, a little bit of attention over here in the United States. April Towers are a... Uh, more of a, what you call a synth pop band from Nottingham Forest. And uh, they remind me not so much of 80s uh, new wave synth, but they remind me more of like 90s. Think like Information Society and Cause and Effect and Machine in Motion and Exotic Birds and people like that that were kind of making electronic music right as grunge was hitting and they just got completely wiped out. But uh, that's what April Towers reminds me of. They're quite good. We've played them before on the show, A Song of the Week. Uh, this song is called Takes One to No One. They are currently trying to gather up enough money to record their uh, debut album. They are 90% of the way there. Go to their Facebook page, April Towers, and they'll give you all the information you need there. And uh, see what you think of this tune. This is our Song of the Week, Takes One to No One, April Towers, PF State Recorder, so long and thanks for listening. I want to do